So please, let's welcome on the stage here with me online, Joy Stan, directly from Hong Kong at Hair Work From Home premises. Hello, Joyce, how are you? Who's coming uh, here on the stage? Hi, hi, Amalette. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Nice to have you here. And we were having such a nice conversation at the backstage. I learned <laughs> yes. so much more about you and all of the experience that you have. So I'm sure the members here, I, I can see we have Ellen, and we have Claudia and Jacqueline, they're joining from Malaysia and the United States. Amazing. Later on when we have the q and I'm sure they're gonna be here. And Rachel, she's also joining from Canada. I would like to start with one of the, I will say most important things in the workplace, your confidence. How have you built your confidence being in, an, in a surrounding an environment that it's mainly male? How have you done it in, in your career? Um, I think confidence has not been something that's been easy for me. Um, exactly like you say, I work in an industry that is very much surrounded, uh, that, that's surrounded by male, but also on top of that, um, very, very type A personalities. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've never really been in this position where I, you know, for lack of a better word, can just like bullshit my way through because it's, it's, it, it just, doesn't work when everybody around me is so outspoken and so confident. Mm. So I think over time, I've really learned that um, confidence take hard work. Um, for me, it really is a. It, I really need to be in a place where I know that I truly know what I'm talking about, and I know um, that I, I have something to add onto the table. Um, so I do think confidence really comes from within. Mm -hmm. And knowing that I have that ability. So it's partly hard work and really learning your craft, but also sort of self assurance and knowing that, you know, I am worthy and I am, I can add onto the table. What's your take and confidence versus overconfidence? Because in this world now, we are looking about a lot of overconfident people that may show something that, but they don't deliver or they think they have it, but they, they still don't have it. So in the workplace, and especially in your industry, how you how do you deal with that, and how do you pinpoint those people right. the truth versus the not very trustworthy? We talked a little bit about this in the, in the backstage, and you know, um, I think you know, there even in, within confident a confident person, there are different types of confident people, right? I mm -hmm. think if you're truly competent in what you're talking about, and and whatnot, that, that type of confidence usually is, is the, the, the respect is mutual and people respect you for that. Um, there, are t there are situations where you just have to sort of perk up and, and, and you know, sort of exert more confidence than you may feel inside and in and, and a way sort of, um, you know, um, get yourself through the situation. Unfortunately, um, if you ask me, I think the world as it is today um, are less kind to women to do who do that compared to men i think men do that a lot and they get away with it <laughs> for lack yeah. of a better word and and you know people pat them on the back and you know go you know you you, you did well in that situation you pull through whereas with women it it sometimes just come off slightly differently um and people receive it differently and i think it's unfortunate i don't think it should be like that but unfortunately mm -hmm. we live in the world that we do and we have to navigate around situations like that so i think you know it definitely comes from um knowing sort of uh what you're talking about but also you know um i think humility comes a long way as well if you don't know what you're talking about you know asking for help asking for mentorship actually builds towards your confidence yourself and how people see you yes you're right a lot of us have that fear of asking or the fear of saying i don't know and then we just go backstage and try to figure it out and it might not be the best result at the end of the day I think a lot of times, you know, in client meetings for me, um, you know, clients will ask me a question where I don't know how to answer. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I've learned that to say, you know what, I don't know that right now, but I'll go back and come back to you. It's a perfectly normal answer. But I think yeah. for a lot of us, we, we just think, oh, my gosh, it's, it's a, you know, it's an epic fail. So um, that's not the case. And knowing that it's OK, um, you know, to come to come back. And uh, I, I think it, it, it's, it's okay, yeah. 
How do we fight the cultural nuances behind that? Because it's very cultural that people don't want to say that they don't know, especially here in this side of the world. I think, um, you know, again, when I say I don't know, um, I don't know, but I always I'll tell the person that I'll come back to you, right? Um, there are resources around you, there are people, make sure there are enough resources and people around you where you can get the right answer. And going back with the proper answer, for me, is always better than sort of just winging my way through it and, and end up answering something wrong. Because actually that ends up shattering my confidence a lot more at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah, it's better it's better to be upfront and keep on that communication too, because if we leave people with the uncertainty, that's when things also don't go in the best ways. You are talking about time and how that time can affect our influence. How do you build up that influence with your coworkers? Is there any tips that you can give us to influence our coworkers faster or in a more effective way? Right. I think influencing others, I mean, <clears throat> I always say flip the, flip the coin and put yourself in the other person's position, right? Who do yeah. you respect? Who do you, you know, take advice from? It's often somebody that you respect and you, you know, sort of look up to or, or you, 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 you believe they're, they're, they're good people or you, you, you know. And so I really think that this respect, um, this mutual respect and um, humility um, goes a long way in a sense that, you know, lead, lead by example in terms of what you're trying to influence other with. And um, because at the end of the day, it's always a mutual thing, mm -hmm. I, th I think is, is my point, right? Um, you, you, people will not respect you if you do not respect them. <laughs> So yeah. I think you always have to start with yourself, right? How do I respect others around me? How do I um, um, treat others around me the way that I would like to be treated? And over time, that's how you influence them. Do you think that politics in the workplace or perhaps having to be a little bit more tactical or diplomatic has a big impact in uh, the final result of your influencing? Well, I think in terms of politics, um, I think first and foremost, one should always be respectful. One should always be understanding of others because there are so many different people around us and everybody has come from a different background and come from a different place. And sometimes, you know, you may receive certain comments a certain way, they may not mean it that way. Mm. So I always say having a benefit of the doubt um, goes a long way. So first and foremost, I wouldn't just sort of take everything face value and get very angry or get very offended very immediately. And I think the other part of it is knowing yourself, right? Um, if you know what you stand for, if you know what your values are, if you know what your morals are, it doesn't really matter if somebody else sort of treats you a different way mm -hmm. because you, you, you conduct yourself with your moral compass <laughs> in yeah. a way. That, and, and it's not my job to criticize other people, right? I, I don't think it's ever my job to ever judge somebody else. It's my job to carry myself the way that I think one should carry ourselves and uh, by my moral standards. And so I think to, to not get offended is a very, very big part of that game. Okay, that's a, that's a great advice because there's a lot of policy. One, a few of our members are asking as females, how do we get along with our bosses? Is, is there anything that we can do to get along with them in a better way? Or we just, as you're saying, we just be truth to ourselves and, and respect the counterpart? Um, it depends on if your boss is a woman or a man. I actually think <laughs> okay. it's a very big difference. Um, as, as a woman, I mean, I, I, I hate to, you know, fall into all these stereotypes, but we are emotional beings. And a lot of times, you know, um, sort of facing our bosses, um, I think being able to control that emotion um, mm -hmm. and, and, and articulate yourself clearly. And I think for, this is for me, I don't know if it applies to all women. Um, it takes a little bit of preparation, especially when I'm going in there with like a very heated, you know, to discuss a very heated topic, right? Um, 
that it does take a little, I, I notice that it takes me a little bit more preparation than my male colleagues. They can just storm in and sort of like, you know, <laughs> start <laughs> screaming. It's not as good an, as an idea if I storm in and start screaming. So it just takes me a little bit of time to sort of collect my thoughts and 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 sort of go in and and make sure that I get the points that I want to speak across. You see, um, because sometimes with especially with girls, our emotion tend to get in the way of of the points that we're trying to make. So I think to be well thought out and to be organized, I think it, it helps me a little bit. And I think in terms of dealing with bosses, ultimately, um, and I say this to sort of all all uh, junior colleagues next to me, uh, is that I very seldom go in asking for, you know, a promotion or a pay raise or anything. Mm. I think I think more often I go in there and I ask for res more responsibility and I ask for more opportunities, because I know that if I'm functioning in the level that is above where my pay grade or my 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 title entails, it's much easier for them to push me along okay. than 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 me going in there demanding that I need certain you know title or certain whatever because um, I already help them justify their reasoning. So I think it's it's much easier going in there asking for opportunities, asking for responsibility, asking for um, sort of uh, 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 more help in a way um, than going in there demanding and, and, and expecting. That's a great tip to influence because if you make <laughs> yourself needed and yes. that you're very valuable for sure, people will give you more later on and connects us to time and patience. And you were also saying again, managing your feelings, structuring your emotions as a lady. You said to me backstage some kind of analogy uh, between spaghetti and can you can you talk to me about it? Because I really, really like that analogy. <laughs> I was telling Amati that I learned this in marriage counseling, that you know, apparently a woman's brain and a man's brain work differently. A woman's brain is like spaghetti, they tell me, and a man's brain is like waffles, where men are much better at compartmentalizing their feelings their thoughts. They're able to sort of take something out of a compartment, deal with it and puts it back, you know, and, and in the compartment and closes it and then opens another <laughs> door. Whereas for us, we are just sort of, you know, <laughs> everything is connected, you know, like, I don't know, I lost an earring this morning and suddenly my whole day is very bad. You know, it's sort of, it's very difficult for us to sort of separate. Yeah. our feelings from the moment and so uh yeah i mean I, I i learned that over time and i think um you know that is fine that's how god created each of each and one of us and there are pros and cons because we are much more sort of emotional being and sensual beings where we're able to you know do things better in certain situations because of that but at the same time given in professional workplace workplaces is much more sort of um structured that you know being able to process those feelings and and learn that it doesn't actually have to affect every other area of my life and to learn to control i mean control is probably not a good word but to process and understand them um goes a long way and sort of me going about my day and and dealing with people around me that's I got a couple of uh, laughing happy faces. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for our audience. And uh, going to that and processing feelings and managing them, how do we deal with bullies at the workplace? If some someone, a coworker, is making us feel anxious or stressed, is there any advice for that? Well, you know, going back to what we said earlier, I think you know um, to not get offended. I think, and 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 it has to, and it's ties into sort of a lot of things that we talked about earlier, right? I think um, compassion is, 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 is a huge thing. And knowing that, you know, that person may be going through a bad day because, yeah. you know, their daughter is sick or, or whatever it is. And, and that, and that um, you know, everybody is coming from a different place, um, helps us take those critiques much easier. And once you're able to take on the critiques, it's much easier and, and not get offended and, and sort of take them and not let them affect you too much. It's much easier than to not fall into the trap of like, 
you know, being angry, feeling the need to rebuttal, feeling the need to get even, you know, all of that. I think, mm -hmm. I think, I think it just makes you a much more level headed person. And those are, you know, people we always value in a workplace. And over time, people will know that it doesn't affect you. And then you will find that the bullying eventually stops. Actually, the bull, you, you only make the bullying worse if you react to them, I think, a lot of times. So I think that that's definitely one part of it, knowing to how to process your emotions and not get offended by it. And the other part of it is to know yourself, mm -hmm. right? Is that if you know that what you're trying to do is the right thing to do, then, you know, um, by all means, go ahead and have the confidence and, you know, continuing. Sometimes, you know, I also think that not so much bullying, you need to make sure you, you surround yourself with enough mentors and, 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 and friends that are able to give you good advice because then you're able to take that, you know, difficult comment, bullying, whatever you want to call, take it to them and ask them, is there truth in this? Mm. Right? Because sometimes it might be just the thing you needed to hear and you really couldn't hear it. <laughs> and yeah. unfortunately, when it comes from bully, you will never be able to hear it. But when it comes from mentors and when it comes from friends that you trust, you can hear it. And so sometimes I do think it's important to have that support network around you where you can take these comments and, and just sort of shoot it to them and have them mirror it back to you. Is, is, there, is there anything in here that's, that, that's truthful and that I needed yeah. to hear? Um, sometimes, you know, there might be. If there aren't, then, you know, just throw them in the dustbin and keep moving. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like high because, school, right? Right, but because no matter at what stage you're in your life, I, I'm sure even if you're, you know, president of the United States, you're getting bullied, you're getting difficult comments, you're receiving them. It will never end. It will just never end. Yeah. So true. knowing, knowing that you know that you're on your path and that you're taking whatever comments you can to better, you know, that path or better that business that you're trying to build. Um, and, and you just got to put on your helmet and keep going, essentially. Yeah, so don't dismiss the comment because it might have some truth behind, but cross check it with people that are also kind of on the same page as you and they, they will give you that mentorship. Mentoring has become very, very popular at this day and age. And we have so many mentoring platforms like this one, wonderful few mentoring online sessions. But I have seen and came across through a lot of them around the world where people give their time to mentor others. How, mm -hmm. What's your take in mentoring and how it has affected your career? And do you still have a mentor? I think mentoring is super important. I, I, I think there are formal mentors in life and there are informal mentors in life. Mm -hmm. Informal mentors in life are my good friends and people I really just get together on a regular basis and update them on what is happening. There are formal mentors in my life where I will call upon them when I really need their expert advice. You know, usually these are people that are a bit more busy and <laughs> harder to get a hold of on a regular basis. Um, but fundamentally, I think mentoring, a lot of the work falls on the mentee. Okay. And I and I see and I see a lot of mentoring relationship breakdown when the mentee sits there and expect the mentor to reach mm -hmm. out and because it's very difficult um, again if you're able to sort of flip the flip your the coin to the other side and sit on the mentoring it's very difficult for the mentor to know when you're having difficulties and when you're what you're feeling essentially yeah. right because the feelings are yours if you don't um, voice them out if you don't reach out and ask for help it's very difficult for the mentor to reach out just at the exact time that you need you need and usually again going back to what we talked about earlier advice usually come best when you need to hear them at that point you know i've i've gotten a lot of advice earlier on in my life where i didn't have that understanding or i didn't have that uh, experience to to understand what the mentor was trying to say to me and they just sort of blew past me like okay sure mm -hmm. right but until you're in that situation and until you're going through something it's very difficult for you to remember to apply that advice you got you know five years ago to your current situation and so reaching out in your moment of crisis or in your moment of you know anxiety is much more effective 
than just sitting down regularly and somebody giving you advice just generally. So I definitely think, you know, if you, and that's why I have, I have different types of mentor, right? I have, I have informal mentors that just sort of help me manage my day to day psyche. And then there are formal mentors that I know to call upon when I have specific problems that I want to ask them about. How do you find those formal mentors? Uh, because as you were saying, some of those people might be super busy or you're looking to have a certain type of advice of someone that might be 10 degrees of separation. Is, is there a, a way to find those mentors? Well, I mean, I am very blessed in a sense that I work in an orga organization that really believes in mentoring. Okay. So um, the ability to reach out to sort of senior colleagues around me is is around the world is very available. But outside of that, I also have a lot of mentors that are not within my workplace. I think, um, again, going back to knowing your problems and knowing yourself is that mm. a lot of times, if you reach out to somebody who is very experienced in a certain area and you know that if you ask this person that question, they'll be able to answer it, 90% of the time they'll answer you because it takes them no effort, right? right? I mean, you know, they 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 do it every day. And and so, you know, it's just like, if I call you, yeah, Meti, and I wanna ask you about, okay, how do I, you know, communicate to this person? I'm sure you just be like, sure, I mean, yeah. no problem. But if I come to you and say, I'm feeling sort of really bad today and I don't know why, you're gonna be like, okay, <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't know you all enough, I don't know how to help you. So um, building those type of relationships, you have to be very targeted. You need to know what you wanna ask, what you wanna solve, and who is the best person to solve it, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas then informal mentors are easier to build because those are just people that are in your life and, and really know you. But I think um, being able to build the, the more sort of expertise type of mentor-mentee relationship, you have to reach out with very, very specific questions. Okay. It's almost like structuring our feelings, also structuring our <laughs> ideas. <laughs> we have a question, I have two questions from the floor. Shirley, she's asking, policy of workplace bullying is needed. Any insights? My, this is her research area. Um, I definitely think policies are definitely needed. I definitely think education um, <clears throat> is very much needed in terms of um, bullying, harassment, whatever it is. Um, and, and I think a lot of large corporations are now actually fortunately taking this stuff very, very seriously. So I definitely agree that that is needed. But I, I will also say, unfortunately, we are human beings and we live in a world where gossip happens yeah. and, 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 and jealousy happens and, and all of that. And so um, I don't think it will ever go away. And, 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 and it, because it happens at any gathering of any kind and any sort, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> and we have not been able to get rid of it throughout humanity. So um, we still need to equip ourselves in terms of how to deal with it and how to you know, um, address these issues. Um, so yes, but I definitely do think the policy helped. I think education goes a long way. Um, education definitely um, um, uh, 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 teaches people to learn to, you know, respect others and 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 relate to others. I always say, you know, addressing women inequality, the first thing you got to do is educate the men. Yes, <laughs> right? yes. If they don't. If there's no point if a bunch of women keeps getting together and talking about it and there's no male presence because if they don't get it and they don't understand it and they're not doing something about it it will never work yeah there is so, yeah. Indeed that phenomenon of we have all these female events and then there's no male presence and they yeah you're right they don't understand i, I definitely it. think that is always a big problem but when, when, when we have events talking about female you know equality issues there, there should be 50% men in that room, yeah. right? <laughs> they need to learn to care about it as well because it affects their colleagues, it affects the work environment. So um, again, I think I think that's that. But you know, flipping the coin to the other side, I think women should always be the biggest supporter of women. I think it actually hurts more when a, when women don't support women than men doesn't support women. True. Um, because, you know, and unfortunately we are human beings and, and we, we have jealousy and, and, and all of that happens, right? To put those feelings aside and to support our fellow women, I think is, is, is often um, a first step towards educating and inf influencing those around you. That's why these platforms are great. The few <laughs> mentoring, the, 
the audience is going so ballistics interactive. I have one question <laughs> from Jacqueline and then we have a hand raised. So let's go for the question, going back to the mentoring part. Jacqueline is asking, what is the best advice you have gotten from your mentors? <laughs> The best advice, I mean, there, there's been a lot of good advice, but I think the one advice that I really, that has, that has really impacted my life and changed um, how I interact with everybody is humility, to be humble. Um, because it's really, I think as a woman, um, to know our shortfalls and to know where we need help is, has really helped me build my confidence and to and to and, and to work with everybody around me whether it is my clients or or my colleagues or whatnot because um i feel like it's the humility is the biggest weapon to break all sort of walls and and misconception and whatever that stands in a way, your way when you're trying to build a relationship between somebody um when you walk into the space and and sort of say I'm humbled and I'm honored to be able to work with you. It takes all sort of um, pride, ego out of the room. And it makes it so much easier to have a con candid conversation, whether it is, again, with client, colleague, superior, junior, or whatever it is. So I, I really feel like that's really been my very, very big, um, it was a great advice given to me by my mother. And, um, and, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful for that advice. Being transparent and vulnerable, it's also mm -hmm. a superpower, you're right, Joyce. And it yeah. works the best being a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, true. that's when our feelings come into handy. Yeah. We have Rachel from, uh, she's directly from Vancouver. She has a question for you. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Rachel. Great to connect with you. I just had a quick question. Um, as a younger person, I often feel like I am not um, in a position to influence others. What are your thoughts on this and how can young people, especially young women, have an influence? You can definitely influence others. Everybody can influence others. I actually learn so much from my junior colleagues every day. I think, again, you always know, knowing yourself and knowing what you can put on the table. Right. I think sometimes action speaks louder than words. And so I think, you know, as long as you carry yourself the way that you um, believe you want others to sort of treat you um, when you ha uh, have a comment mm -hmm. to comment on, you know, um, to to sort of bring it up as you see fit. I mean, I, I, I don't think. Um, and I don't think you won't be able to get a voice into the room or, or whatnot. Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much uh, for that question, Rachel. And now we have Tina. She's asking, how do you get noticed by your boss's boss? <laughs> That's an interesting question. <laughs> I guess uh, get noticed by your boss <laughs> okay. because I assume your boss talks to his boss all the time. And if he wants to talk about you, you'll get noticed by your boss's boss. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if you, if you, you want to make that situation more specific, I think I can, I can uh, uh, answer it in a way that's more pertainable to you. But um, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's again to function in that level that, you know, um, that you want to be at and, and therefore your boss will then say, Hey, this person is truly adding value to my team. And this person is truly making an impact. Trust me, as he reports to his boss, you will naturally be in that conversation. Yeah, that's true. And <sighs> I guess people's skills will come handy on this. Do you have any people, do you think that there's people skills that are specific for female leaders or people skills are just people skills for everyone? Hmm, that's a very good question. I do think I do, I think people skills are people skills. I think fundamentally that they're people skills. But um, I ha I actually have a woman boss and a male boss. Okay. I go to my woman boss for different things <laughs> compared to my male boss, and I think that's because she's a woman. And 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 so and 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 actually, I see. Um, the the floor. I mean, we we work on trading for so I see the floor naturally do that as well because um, 
unfortunately or fortunately, I think women are just have certain qualities that are just different than men, right? I think women have a better attention to details. Mm-hmm. Women are better multitaskers, right? Women has a better personal touch. And so depending on what my issue is, um, you know, I go to different bosses. I mean, I'll give you an example. I think if I have to deal with a very operational type situation, I go to my woman boss because I think she I know she has better patience and better understanding and helping me deal with that situation because it just requires a lot of detail and a lot of, you know, um, how a trades get booked out or, or, or whatever. Whereas my male boss just wouldn't have as much, you know, um, attention or, or patience to deal with that. Uh, whereas I think in terms of more a strategy, how do I make, you know, to, to your question, how do I make myself better known to my bosses? How do I project myself better? I actually generally go to a male to that because a man just does that better than a woman naturally. And so I guess it depends on the issue. And therefore, um, with that said, you know, I think both sides need to have understanding, um, you know, of the other side, and and see how you can better yourself as a boss to 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 be more well rounded. What happens when we are not fortunate to have both perspectives, and we we only have a male boss? Let's say. Then go find yourself a woman mentor. Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, because, because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. And I think a lot of personality goes into play. I mean, we're very much generalizing here, right? There are male bosses that are very understanding and very, very good. And, and really, you know, take that extra time to reach out to his woman, woman, you know, uh, colleagues, because he knows that they need that extra time to process and discuss, you know, whatever it is. Um, but where are there, there are unfortunately cases where, um, you know, where, where the, where the, where the male bosses aren't as, um, uh, aren't as, uh, nice or aren't as understanding and it can go the other way. Whereas we can have women bosses that are just very, very mad and upset all day long as well. And those are not easy ones to deal with as well. So I, I do think, um, uh, it depends personality, but try to build a relationship with your bosses because at the end of the day, they are human too. It took me a while to realize that, but you know, I, I work with billionaires every day. They are, they are, they're very, very successful human beings that when I, when I first started dealing with them, I used to just look at them and go, wow, like, you know, and get very intimidated. But you know, over time I realized that they are human beings too. They eat. They have good days, they have bad days. And so once you're able to sort of close that gap, that the understanding mutual respect builds much faster and much easier. Oh, that goes back again to building those relationships, (laughs) taking the time and doing the work. And the million dollar question, (laughs) how do we approach the asking for a pay raise? (laughs) <laughs> I think I answered this question earlier. Um, I very seldom go in and ask for a pay raise, to be very honest, or a promotion. And, and that is because I, I generally prefer that I'm, I'm given it because they really think I'm due. And so, um, again, um, I think rather than going to, in to ask for a pay raise and ask for all that, going in to ask for responsibility and opportunities just positions you much better. Because uh, when you're functioning in that level, when you go in and ask for the opportunity and ask for the responsibility, very rarely does the boss not give it to you. Because mm-hmm. if they don't, it's, it's much more of a personal you know, a relationship issue. Because who doesn't want somebody to step up and who doesn't want somebody to you know, do more for them, right? They will yeah. naturally give it to you. And so when you ask for the opportunity and you ask for that responsibility, they will give it to you. And your job is to function in that and excel in that. And when you do and they still don't pay you, it's a much better bargaining position to have than um, you know, going in there saying, hey, I've been there for five years, I've been here for six years, whatever it is, that person is being paid that much, I think I should be paid that much. It's that is never a good conversation to have. And that will naturally put your bosses on the defensive. Yeah, asking, so, asking for the, them to give you first. Yeah. Right, right. So whereas, 
And, and when you put them on the defensive, it's never it's never an easy conversation, right? The point, you know, I think all of you know in terms of building relationship, influence other is to break all those, you know, walls and and take the defensive away and and really have a kind of conversation, right? So therefore, um, going in saying, "Wow, I'm so great, I'm so glad that I've done this this year, and I'm very glad that I was able to make this impact, that impact," will naturally be a much easier segue into how much you're worth, how much you're paid, what level you should be at. And if you're not at there, I would ask your boss, how do I get there? I, I, I think I think when you just put it out there and ask that question, again, you're not you're putting you're making your boss one of your mentors. Yeah. You're you're asking for help. You're building that relationship and they will be much more eager to help you. Would you say that influencing others also have to do with making them feel empowered and that you care about them, but that they, they can still have a little bit of the upper hand? Absolutely. I actually um, spent a lot of time with my team telling them that, you know, I need you as much as you need me. Um, we are on the same boat. <laughs> and so yeah. this one team, one dream thing, I really try to drive home because I think if they're not happy where they're working, they're not happy working with me, um, nothing will ever get done. Um, I, I, I think teamwork is, 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 is integral to um, anything that we do. I cannot do everything myself. I cannot be at sixth place at the same time. And, I, and I, there are definitely moments when I really, really need my teammate to step up because I'm swamped and I can't handle so many things at the same time. And so, you know, I, I have to show appreciation for that. And I have to give them an environment where they want to do that, you know. And, and to do that, you have to put your again put yourself in their situation have you you know sort of raise your hand and be like you know what i'll help it doesn't matter you don't have to pay me i'll stay up late i'll help you why why did you want to do that because you respect that person and you really wanted to help that person and you know that that person is doing everything they can to excel you know and and they will bring you along right so i have to create that environment in order for the team to want to step in and help out where is the fine line between, okay, I made myself available, I took more responsibility, I'm working this much more in order to perhaps in the future get an advantage. And still I cannot get it because there's somehow a relationship issue or a communication issue. Where is the fine line between saying, I'm gonna keep on getting the punches mm -hmm. or should I pivot and perhaps change? Well, I think in terms of when you, uh, I'll take a step back. I think and when you ask for responsibility and when you ask for opportunities, you should also be strategic about it, right? You, you've been in the workplace long enough to know what opportunities and what uh, responsibilities are more important. I don't know if that's the right word, but are, are more impactful, I think is mm -hmm. a better word, right? Um, shoot for those because you, the goal is to become such an integral part of the team that your boss can't do without you, okay? So when you position yourself there, I think naturally a lot of the personal relationship and, and the issues will go away because your boss needs you, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, they're not gonna like just be like, you know what, I'm just gonna make this person work like a slave until this person leaves, trust me, now that I'm in the position that I am at with senior leadership, you know, or within Goldman, we spend so much of our time talking about attrition and how to stop people from leaving because it's very detrimental to business when people randomly stand up and leave. It is actually the worst thing that can happen. And so you would be surprised as to how much time bosses and senior leadership spend on making sure attrition stay put. And so if you are in that position where they cannot do without you, then trust me, they will do everything you can to make sure you stay, including pay you and make sure you get the title that you want. So I think to be strategic about, so when I say, you know, take on more responsibility, take on more opportunities, I don't mean just FaceTime stick in your, stay in your office till 12 every night. That is not what I mean. Actually, I, I'm, Personally, I've never really cared about FaceTime. I don't care if you're there or not, as you get the work done. Yeah. So essentially, I think you have you yourself owe it to yourself to be strategic about it. What skills do I have? 
what am I good at, such that I can place myself in a position where I can excel and be very good at that particular thing, right? So that's number one. I, unfortunately, there are all there will be times when personality crash, it doesn't work, you know, then you will then you should think about, you know, putting yourself in a better working environment. Because at the end of the day, like I say, we're humans, and sometimes people just don't get along. <laughs> and you have to recognize that situation. But I would say that, you know, before that, understand your boss, understand what where they're coming from, your boss got to where he or she is for a reason. They cannot be entirely bad people, I, I would assume, <laughs> unless you're in a very odd trade. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but, but you know, generally, they, they would have had people skills and a personality that allowed them to excel. It's just sometimes, like I say, they have bad days and they're not speaking to you in a way that you need to be spoken to or they're not communicating with you in the way that, you know, you need to communicate it with. And so see if that can be fixed by having kind of conversation, going in, being humble and, and, you know, saying, Hey, you know, I really, I really admire you. I want to be you one day. So teach me how to be you, right. Rather than just be going into work gruntled every day, because that just, that just feeds the vicious cycle. Yeah. Understanding ourselves, knowing ourselves, but also the others, reading them and making them feel important. Part of the summary of that we have another question from Claudia. She wants to know, what are your tips to keep a good influence on your team? Lead by example. <laughs> There's no better way. Um, I can sit there and tell them and rationalize, you know, tell them why I think they should go this way and, and give them a million reasons. Um, they will never understand it until I, 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 I take myself there and I start doing it. Right. I think um, a lot of times um, I spend more time explaining my instruction than I'd spend giving out the instruction because I always want the team to understand why <clears throat> I'm asking them to do something because they might, a lot of times they might sit in a seat and their world is just a portion of the whole scope that I'm looking at. And they don't know that the reason I'm freaking out about a certain thing is because something there's, there's a huge fire on this side that they're not seeing. Right. And so I actually make sure that um, on a regular basis, I sit down with my team and tell them what I'm seeing. I can't do that every day, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. we have actual work to do. But, you know, I, I try to sit down with them regularly to give them a big picture so that they know where we're going. And then when I give them instructions or, 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 or <clears throat> tasks to do, I explain to them how it falls into the greater, um, greater um, scope of work so that they understand that their work actually makes a difference and their work is actually impacting the overall business because again i think especially if the staff is doing sort of more mundane type situation they lose sight of um the the impact that that yeah. specific task has on the overall business and then it because it's repetitive it's easy for sort of bosses to <clears throat> take advantage of that and assume that it will run and roll. So I, I think it's, it's, it's important to not lose sight of that and make sure the team has an understanding of the overall picture well, and, and, and where we're trying to go. Leading up with a tactical empathy, that's, that's lovely. Is there a difference between influencing up or influencing down? There is, of course, because I think that the type of conversation you're having are quite different. Um, influencing up is maybe more of a strategic conversation. Um, influencing down is sometimes um, less so. But I think generally, if you keep the few sort of virtues that you carry along with yourself and um, you uh, sort of stay true to yourself, I think, that that part doesn't change whether you're looking up or looking down i think yeah. or looking sideways um but again the level of conversation would surely be different right and perhaps also the choices of words that you take absolutely absolutely i think also to to understand that relationship um i'm so sorry i have a one-year-old daughter who <laughs> just got hold of you guys um um, but also sort of understanding that relationship is quite key is that um, <clears throat> bosses function 
in a sort of more strategic high level area. And so, you know, if you take something that is very micro and, and sort of take that and run along with it for two hours, it's tiresome for them and yeah. it's difficult for them because they actually are at a level where they may not have the understanding to help you to that micro detail. So again, knowing your problem, knowing your audience is it makes a huge difference. We have another question from Rachel. She is uh, very interested about this topic. Rachel, you want to come on the stage? Mm -hmm. She is there. She is. Hi, Rachel. Perfect. Hi. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, have you found a difference or any other difficulties um, influencing people in the work from home environment virtually um, instead of communicating in person with people? Absolutely. Zoom has been a savior. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it's very difficult. Um, I, I, in my workplace, I sit in a trading floor uh, sort of uh, uh, style office. And so literally my team is sitting around me with zero barriers. They can see my computer screen. I can see their computer screen. Whereas working from home, we lost that luxury. And so a lot of the communication made just became a lot more difficult. And so I think over communicating has been sort of something that I keep reminding myself to do. Um, <clears throat> like I say, getting the team together over Zoom at least once a week for, for me to tell them what is happening, what I'm doing, what I'm seeing, so that they can stay on top of what is happening. I'm using messages, um, chats, or chat groups, everything. So, and, and, I, and, and I try to make sure we're in group chats so that everybody is posted at the same time. Um, so that's definitely important. On top of that, um, I think, um, I try to do one-on-ones more, much more often than I do, do at work is I'll set up a time and literally have a phone call with each person in my team um, because I, I'm not able to see them during the day. I think when you're able to see them, it's much easier. You can read on their expression. Are you tired today? Are you stressed out today? Whereas when we're all at our homes, I have no idea how stressed out they are, right? So um, I mm -hmm. definitely try to make sure I do that. And I also just put it out there, right? I, I actually sat the team down at the beginning when this work from home thing first started. I actually was on maternity leave right before um, this this COVID situation happened. Oh, so wow. I, I yeah. had a bit of a head start where I actually sat them down before I went on maternity leave. I was like, guys, like you're not gonna see me in the office anymore. My phone line is open. My email is open. You can ping me any time of the night. I may not get back to you immediately, but I promise you I'll get back to you. So I think making sure that communication channel is open at all times and, and really acting on it um, um, helped sort of make sure that the communication flows through. For sure. Yeah, thank you so much. Definitely some no great problem. <laughs> Thank you to Rachel again on the engagement. I'm loving that. Can someone gives me a thumbs up? You can put it on the screen. It's always nice to see that interactive <laughs> element on our mentoring sessions. Anything else do you want to leave us with? A piece of advice, a quote, or something that someone told you before that made a very big impact in your work life and also in your personal life? I think, know that each one of you have something in you and and that you have something to put on the table it's it doesn't matter how old you are it doesn't matter you know how young you are it doesn't matter how inexperienced you are you have experience okay and that perspective that experience you have had brings a new perspective on the table and that's your value add so know that and be sure of that build around that and 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 that's how you grow i think <laughs> That's such a lovely, lovely advice. I'm also going to take it on. It has been <sighs> wonderful speaking to you. And see from the floor, if there's any other questions, we have, again, Jacqueline, Ellen, Claudia. We have Liz. And they are connecting from all over the world. And that's this the beauty amazing. of <laughs> online and obviously having this wonderful platform of female entrepreneurs worldwide. Thank you, thank you very much again, Joyce. If you wanna connect you. with Joyce even more or with other speakers and learn more about any other topics, please go to the FEW website, the online platforms, our social media 
Tag us, hashtag ask few anything. I'm Jamilet. I'm happy to see you once again. Remember, we have more events, more online sessions next week. So make sure to connect. Thank you, Joyce. Have a good day. And Thank hopefully you. we can meet soon face to face in the near future. Please take care. Perfect. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.